All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you what I think is the most simplest way to start a portrait for a beginner. Hi, welcome to Paint Coach. I'm Chris Fornatero here to help simplify oil painting so you can get better faster. All right, now there are a lot of ways to go about starting a portrait, and this is just one way. And if I were to recommend one way for a beginner to try, this would be that way. Now, does this mean that it's going to work perfectly for everybody and be everybody's favorite way and, and every beginner is going to take to it really well? No, uh, this is just what I would recommend. Now, before we get into that, please, if you like this video, if you like the channel, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're looking for full painting video tutorials, if you want to see the full tutorial of this Lydia from Beetlejuice painting, that is on my Patreon page, which you can find a link to in the description below. Now, if you struggle mixing colors, I have a special gift for you, and it's actually access to one of my Patreon videos, and not just any one of my Patreon videos. It is my shortcut to color mixing guide. It's a quick 10-minute video that will give you a strong foundation of mixing colors just using the primaries and white. I also tell you what other colors I like to add to my palette as shortcut colors. These are colors that help me get to other colors very quickly. So if that sounds like something that'd be useful to you, check out the link to that below as well. And if you want to see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. All right, let's get into this tutorial. All right, so this way of starting a portrait requires that you actually have a fairly accurate and detailed drawing. And this doesn't mean you have to get extremely detailed drawing every single little thing that you see, but it should be accurate. The nose should be where it should be. The eyes should be where it should be everything should be where it should be uh, this doesn't mean that you have to be very very detailed with it it just needs to be very accurate and however you need to do this do it if you need to graph it graph it if you need to measure things out using a proportional divider if you need to be using a ruler find out where things are even if you're tracing it i don't care that's not the point of this portrait exercise the point of this portrait exercise is to walk you through the steps of building a portrait in its beginning stages so you got your drawing the first thing we want to do is get our darkest darks in there and for this one it's going to be the eyes you know the nostril the hair the eyebrows and the line the mouth now I like to work dark to light which is why I'm doing this but also I am preserving the accurate drawing that we have I'm getting my eyes put in there enough so I know all right at least I know the eyes are in the correct place and as I put on more and more paint on this painting I lose all my pencil marks it's going to be okay now in this portrait there is a lot of this dark hair and I'm going to get in a really dark value for this hair early on one because it is a very very dark 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 and it's easy to get accurately you know if you mix up a pretty dark dark you, you only can be so off when you're mixing something this dark and so you can use that as a key because you know it's going to be fairly accurate so you can use it as a key to make decisions on other values in the painting you can say all right the shadow of the face is dark but how dark is it how much lighter is it compared to this really dark hair also having this hair here is gonna allow us to cut back into the outline of the face. Now, if your portrait doesn't have hair that's surrounding the face like this one, you can do the same thing with the background color. You know, whatever you're using for the background color, get that in early, it doesn't have to be 100% accurate. Uh, it can be done with thin paint, just having something there, you know, having it there as just another tool for you to use to block in this portrait correctly. All right, now I'm going to divide the face up into three major values. You know, I got the darks, the midtones, and the lights. And I'm gonna start by putting in my darkest value first. I'm not worrying about getting this exactly right. You know, I wanna get it close, I wanna get it in the ballpark, but I'm using thin paint here, and I know that I will probably be changing this later. Again, while I'm mapping out these three value zones, I'm not worrying about detail. I'm not worrying about all the other sub values that are happening within these big value shapes. Yeah, I'm putting in this dark value value on the left side of the face and there are a bunch of other values happening within that i'm not worrying about that right now i'm just breaking the face down into darks midtones and lights
Now, since I have my accurate drawing of the mouth here, I'm gonna roughly block in the lips to preserve the accuracy of my drawing. Next, I'm going to mix up a value that's slightly lighter than my darker value, and I'm going to lay that in too. And it's going to be pretty easy to figure out where this is because the light source is obviously coming from the right side and, you know, lighten up the right side of the face. Shadow's going to be the left side. So this mid-tone, it's going to fall in between there. And I'm not worrying about the harsh lines that it's making where it meets my dark value. I know that I will be able to smooth those out later. Now, I like to get rid of all of the white of the canvas as soon as possible. So I wanna put in something for the whites of these eyes. Now, I have a whole video on painting the facial features and you know the eye is one of them. I'll put a link above to the, that video where you can get an in-depth look at uh, painting the eyes along with the nose and the mouth. Now, for the whites of the eyes, they're not gonna be as light as you think they are. That's a very common mistake. People make the whites of the eyes way, way too bright. You don't wanna do that. Uh, they do tend to be a little cooler, so look to add a little bit of blue into your mixture. And also, one side is gonna be darker than the other because the eyeball is a sphere and it's catching the light like anything else. So one side's gonna be lighter, one side's gonna be darker. A lot of times I see people making the whites of the eyes on each side of the pupil you know, the same value. And you don't wanna do that. It's gonna make your eyes look flat. Yes, so now that we have those whites covered up, those whites in the eyes, if you just left the plain canvas there, it's gonna look weird, it's gonna throw things off. When I step back and I look at my painting, you know, my eyes are gonna go towards that. That's why at least I like to get rid of the white canvas as soon as possible. Right, now that I'm gonna go back and start dialing these values a little more and, and working the transitions between them, it's okay if you have to completely change one of these values that you put in. For example, here, my dark value, I put in too dark. So I'm pretty much gonna change this whole section on the left side of the face. I'm gonna shift it and make it a little bit lighter. This is why I always say when you're blocking in your major values, err on the side of making them too dark opposed to too light, because it's a lot easier to lighten them up opposed to darkening them. Now, I like to get all of the major values onto the painting as soon as possible. I like to think of it as getting all the players onto the field so that I can start playing. And here I'm realizing that I'm missing a key value, which is the highlight value, you know, kind of the brightest uh, value that we have here. I wanna get some form of that onto the painting so I have it there to reference and to use. All right, so where all these different values meet, you're getting some harsh lines. And to get rid of those, you don't wanna just go and blend it with a brush. You wanna mix up a value that falls in between those different values and place it between them. This might take a few strokes and take some working, but try your best not to just get a brush and feather them together. Now there will be certain times later on and very, very subtle shifts where you can kind of run your brush and soften the edge between them. That's fine but in general try and do it all with the paint all right so at this point the basic form of everything should be there and the rest of the painting is really a matter of just dialing everything in dialing in your value relationships dialing in the structure of these shadows using these different values and shapes to build the face, construct the features. Since you mapped out those three major values, that should be able to keep you on track for the rest of the painting. Just always be stepping back and making sure that you're not painting something out of its value zone. For example, when you start painting in the shadowed side of the face, that you are getting those highlights within the shadows, but you're not making them too bright that they're reading as if they should be on the light side of the face. Pretty much that process of breaking down the face into those three major values values is just repeated again and again and again as you paint, but with just smaller and smaller shapes and more subtle and subtle value shifts. All right, I hope this video helped. Hopefully you can take this process and implement it on your next portrait and get some really good results. Again, if you wanna see the full version of this painting video tutorial, it is on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. If you want my free 
shortcut to color mixing guide. A link to that is below as well. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, helps the channel grow. If you want to see what I am painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I am Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting. Whoa, you're still here. You made it to the end of the video. That must mean you really like it. In that case, you should hit the subscribe button. You'd also probably like this video too. And this video. Please pick one. All right, this is getting awkward.